All right, welcome back to another video. It's been a little while since I've recorded. Um, of course, there's stuff interrupting me already. Um, this is going to be a guide on the Deer Clops boss. It's not going to be as well done as my other uh, easy boss guides because I don't exactly remember how um, I made those the way that I did. <laughs> and also, I'm not motivated enough to make them with that level of editing and such. Basically, I'm just going to be going over a setup that I have uh, came up with in order to, you know, easily beat the boss. We're going to talk about the boss first, the deer clops. If you don't know what the deer clops looks like, which you probably should, uh, I would assume that you fought the deer clops or tried to fight the deer clops or seen him somewhere. But uh, I'll put a picture. Here's another fucking slime on a balloon, of course. I don't know why there's slimes with balloons floating around. There's no wind event, but whatever. What he does, uh, bleh. so this is going to be in master mode, obviously. That's the whole point of this and the series that I made in the first place, to beat all the bosses on master mode and show easy or relatively easy ways to do it. I had some guidelines on how to do this, um, like the videos, like how they were structured. Uh, how basically um, I would be making the you know simplest arenas that I could but you know simple the most the sim simplest but most effective arenas that I could and then kind of having that sort of mentality with my items and stuff as well using things that are relatively easy to get or just extremely vital to the boss fight to make it work. Also, looks like I'm going to have to wait until the next day to actually get this done because the sun is setting. And one thing that I suggest you do not do for this boss fight is fight the deer clops at night because uh, it tends not to go very well. Or it could go much better because there's no form of, you know, boss monster blocking or so what that didn't make sense. But it doesn't block monster spawns or whatever. And having zombies or anything like doing it during like wind events uh which is something i did you can see the deer clops trophy down there i fought it during the a storm event and there were like umbrella slimes and flying fish uh flying at me during the fight and it was a huge hindrance fighting fighting in the the storm events and um at night is kind of a a big problem especially since one of the deer clops attacks uh where it'll throw a bunch of debris up into the air in front of it in one or one or the other direction one or two direct what the hell am i trying to say it'll throw debris up in the air in either direction depending on which one is facing and it's extremely hard to see the debris at night so that's why I suggest you don't do the fight at night. Uh, I'm going to look at a couple of mechanics and stuff. Uh, I have the wiki open right here. First of all, if you're more than 30 tiles away, it turns a dark shade of purple and uh, it becomes immune to all damage. And then the uh, deer clops, one thing as well that makes this a very lenient fight is that the deer clops does not despawn when you die or teleport away. Uh, it only despawns a few minutes after players are not near it, or uh, if you leave and re-enter the world, it'll go away. But it'll stay around, so if you do die, you can go back and fight it. So, the guide is almost, like, completely useless, because it doesn't matter if you die, <laughs> you can just go back and fight the boss. But, you know, in the spirit of being able to just beat it easily, uh, relatively easily, I'm still gonna do it. Oh my goodness, this is kind of a pain in the ass. Oh my lord, dude. I don't know how I'm going to make this video, but I can't really be over there with all the monsters. Have some village music and everything. The deer clops also cannot pass through solid blocks, but if the player is far enough above it, the deer clops uh, can rise through blocks to get to the player. So, you know, just so it doesn't get stuck anywhere. But the actual attacks um, of the deer clops, which I didn't actually go over, except for the debris. I believe this, it only does it if you are not close enough to use its first attack, where it uh, scoops, that's how it's phrased on the wiki, 
and then throws numerous chunks of debris into the air that fall back down. The chunks can pass through blocks. If it is close to the player, will smash the ground, summoning a wave of ice spikes that travels forward towards them. And every third uh, consecutive wave of this does not go as far, but spreads in both directions. So it shoots waves of ice at you that travel along the ground and they do go up onto platforms. So you can't just stay up on a platform to dodge them depending on the direction that it's facing, which it'll, it'll be facing you. Uh, it'll shoot these ice spikes and I'm going to obviously go over it in the fight. I'm going to show you exactly what that is and uh, how you play around it. It stands in place and roars uh, occasionally and then inflicts a slow debuff on all players for uh, a longer amount of time depending on which difficulty you're on. If the player is above the deer claws for enough time, five shadow hands will be summoned around the player. So a way of discouraging the player from just sitting too far above the, where the deer claws is. It's trying to get you to stay close to it, kind of like with the invulnerability, so you can't just, uh, you know, be fighting at super long range and shooting it down or something. And then in expert mode, shadow hands will be periodically summoned that either move forward s slowly, move forward quickly and curve or spin in place. Shadow hands are summoned more frequently as the deer cops life gets lower. And you'll see what these are when the fight actually happens. But they're basically just, you know things that it summons that will try to hinder you and damage you in some way. But that's about it um, as far as what the boss actually does. I have this set up in my inventory and I've had my inventory open so we've been able to see all the all the clutter in it that I still have from whenever I actually play it on this world which I don't do anymore at least not until I decided to do this and I doubt I'll do it more unless people actually want more boss guides in which case you know leave it in the comments down below it's been over a year but anyways this is the easy setup, right? It's meant to be simple to get or like extremely um, necessary for the fight. And because this is after the Brain of Cthulhu or the Eater of Worlds, depending on which kind of world you have, uh, I went for Meteor Armor because it, if you're thinking about simple and easy to use and powerful, the Meteor set with the Space Gun is about as simple and easy as you can get. And it might be kind of like, people might be like, oh, you know, that, that's kind of cheesy, right? Like, you know, you're just using this strong weapon that uses no resources to use. But that's kind of the point, right? It's like you can just get it extremely easily. You know, this is basically the epitome of what you would want to use for something like the Deerclops. If you're just trying to be like, what can I use that's just good and easy to get? And I think this is about it. For our accessories, I think these are basically the same ones as we had in the last boss fight. I don't think there's anything really specifically uh, better that you would be getting. There are some switches, though, that I have because some of the accessories that I have are ones gotten out of a lot of, you know, grinding. Uh, so I've decided to switch them out because they're not super realistic to have gotten on just any just casual playthrough where you're not you know trying to get a lot of stuff we got the frost spark boots which i think are reasonable it's not anything super um you know upgrade over specter boots which are probably what you would have at this point if you're just you know doing a casual playthrough like i said um and not you know trying to find all the different things in order to get frost spark boots but it doesn't help you any extra shield of cthulhu obviously you get this from the eye cthulhu which you'll have fought most likely before the deer clops the frog gear something i'm taking out because you need to get a lot of things in order to make the frog gear i made a video on the frog gear uh, a while back as well and instead of that i'm gonna just gonna be putting the magic luminescence here which is a uh item that was added in this update with the deer clops which I've also made video on. It increases your movement speed and acceleration. It provides light when worn, uh, and that is it. It's a nice little movement item. It's also a generally helpful item because it provides light, so for caves and stuff, and then faster acceleration. So, you know, it's still good just for um, switching directions and everything. But this is very easy to make. Uh, you just need Crimtain or um, Demonite bars and topaz i'm also gonna be taking out my uh warding pink horseshoe balloon because you need to get um a puffer fish and a shark run or what no you need to make the puffer fish into a shark run balloon and then you need to get a horseshoe and etc it's kind of difficult to get so we're just going to be using a 
cloud and a balloon instead, which I think is pretty re pretty reasonable for you to be able to get uh, by this point in the game. Worm scarf, uh, you can use the brain of confusion as well, uh, and the shark tooth necklace, which is just a nice damaging item that is just you know pretty easy to get if you just fight the blood moon once. All right, so a couple eater of um, souls might bother us. Oh look, there's already one right there. Cool. He was just waiting. He really was. Okay, seafood dinner. I left it in my inventory because I just kind of have food items in there. But you definitely want one of these, or maybe two. I don't know. The fight might be m more than four minutes. I'm not sure. Uh, but you want a major improvement to all stats food because I've gone over it before. Um, I'll put some. I'll put the stats on screen here because it's been a while since I've mentioned it in wh whatever video I actually looked into it more in depth in. Uh, but very powerful buff and then we have a bunch of potions in here and this one uh especially is interesting which i'll talk about in a moment but we have our basic potions the swiftness regeneration and iron skin potion at this point i think it's reasonable enough for you to you know go out of your way a little bit in the game to get some potions i did at least that's this is what i did in my playthrough of, of the game or my playthrough of the Don't Starve Constant World, which I'm, you know, I'm still doing uh, currently on, on my channel. Basically, this is these are the potions that I used as well. Um, oh my God, here comes one of the devourers. Where is it? Come on. So I don't have to friggin' deal with you. Goodness gracious, dude. We have a magic power potion for extra magic damage on our gun, obviously. Uh, endurance potion which reduces the damage that you take by 10%, and the Wrath Potion, which increases the damage you take by 10%. It's mostly these two that need fish that are, you know, they're a little bit not easy, but the amount of effort that you would take to go and, you know, grab a fish from each of these locations is definitely worth it for, you know, the boost that they give you in the fight. So that's just my philosophy about these. And I feel like it definitely still fits uh, under the easy, uh, easy um, boss fight sort of um prompt here and then we have the warmth potion which reduces damage from cold sources by 30 percent i believe and this uh works on the deer clops so it's not that much harder to get either than these ones you need to get another fish uh it's from the snow biome and i i didn't know about this uh during my playthrough and um my fight with the deer clops but you can just get a frost minnow from the snow biome make it into a warmth potion and it'll reduce the damage of the deer clops by 30 percent i believe let me look look this up again make sure that i'm actually correct yeah so it reduces damage from cold sources it says um or cold themes enemies by 30 percent which is a huge damage reduction and i think basically makes this fight a cakewalk if it really just does reduce the damage this thing does by 30 percent we're taking a lot of reduced damage from this boss and i think that you could even do without the wrath potion and endurance potion just with the warmth potion if you have this but you know just in the sake of being like you know we're, we're just gonna overkill it with the potions and just beat the hell out of this thing i think we're you know i think we're within our our, our bounds to get these extra two potions but anyways Without further ado, we're going to jump into this fight and get out of the Crimson Biome while, or Corruption Biome while we're at it. I don't know why I put the chest over there. I'm a moron, but we'll just leave that at that. Let's pop our buffs, though. And then, um, that gave me my, my food buff. Yes. And then we're just going to leave these next to our space gun in case we need another one, which I don't think we will, but we'll see. And let's fight the Deer Clops. I'm going to probably, um, sub in the music hopefully i'll be able to find the music for the boss and then be able to sub that in and then do a voiceover because it won't be that uh, easy for me to explain while fighting the boss so we'll see how i end up doing that but let's uh let's show you guys what this fight is all about and uh, how my setup here has um made it much much easier all right, here we are, and there is not much to talk about since I've already uh, told you guys about the Deer Clops' attacks and everything therein, but basically my main strategy revolves around hovering around the top of it. There's four platforms here. They're 10 blocks apart, and that's just to, you know, have a just 
a good way to escape upwards if I need to uh, get away from the debris or if mobs are swarming if you're fighting at night or during an event or something and it, there just happens to be a lot of monsters but as you can see what I'm doing is I'm basically hovering in front of the deer clops uh, or you know yeah st basically staying in front of it a little bit and waiting until it starts its ice spike attack in a certain direction and then I will dash to the other side of it and dodge it when it does the third wave ice attack that goes in both directions you just move away from the deer clops and it takes a little bit of timing and the positioning but it's not that hard right here I bait out the uh, fling attack just to show it show all the projectiles and everything which does not happen if you do a strategy like this where you just stay in close quarters with it um, and move from side to side because it never you never get far enough away to actually proc the attack the only hindrance is well I move upwards to show the five hands attack because that also does not proc unless you go far up above the deer clops if you stay on this one platform honestly you can just completely avoid two of its attacks um, you can just stop them from ever happening and it makes the fight much easier and then you basically just have to watch out for the shadow hands and then uh, get down the like um, timing and distance that you have to move away from the spikes that it shoots. And that's essentially it. There's not much else to the fight um, if you space it correctly. If you don't, then you kind of have to deal with the debris and the um, multiple shadow hands appearing, which can complicate things and make it a lot harder. But you basically just stay in close. And even if you're getting hit a lot with this setup, it's not the most damaging abilities that it's using, so you still don't take that much damage. I mean, as you can see, I'm barely taking anything by just, like, hovering around like this. And, yeah, that's basically it. If you think I missed anything, you know, let me know, and I can try to, uh, enlighten. But I think I got everything. Basically, just highlighted the strat that I used, because it's very simple and quite effective. Last thing, if you guys liked the explanation that I gave of the entire setup and the boss itself, like the length and how it was done overall let me know in the comments just give me some feedback about it i would appreciate that and that's going to be all uh we're just gonna wrap up this fight and then finish up the video All right, and that was that. So, you can see, uh, my potion setup wasn't even really needed. It lasted about as long as a bunch of my buffs, though, the fight. So, there is that. The buffs are pretty good uh, for that. I also got the, uh... <laughs> you looking at me? Are you looking at me? Found the... Uh... All right, uh, there's a deer clops master mode item, which is kind of cool. You know, that's, that's essentially it. Uh, you see, basically the strategy that I had, which I'll have explained, it kind of negates the need for my setup, but if you're not as precise with it, or if you just don't want to use that specific strategy, you still have the setup, and it'll make the fight much easier. You'll take a lot less damage, um, etc. You know, yeah, it's not that hard of a fight, though, if you know uh, how to actually dodge the attacks and how to just, you know, bait out things, not get too far away from it, because that's m mainly the thing. The Shadow Hands make it a little more difficult, but not that much more difficult. That's going to be it, though, uh, I think. I think everything will have been explained pretty well. I hope that uh, you did learn um, from this fight just precisely what the Deer Clomps does and how to play around it in your own fights against the boss. And, um, yeah. That's going to be all for this video. I will see you guys in the next one.